Well, hello there. This is Brian, part of the Brian Gong Show. Uh, my next two videos will explain why I'm calling this the Gong Show. But my name is Brian from Quantlabs.net. I'm going to be talking about over the last few years my experiences with a variety of different programming languages that are out there to both uh, build a trading platform with and also to prototype your trading strategy, your trading model, or your trading algorithm. So let's get on with just the languages for and, and, and the entire platforms and tools that are available for prototyping a strategy or model or algorithm. Okay, so let's start first with R. Now R is free, obviously it's, open, it's an open source type of scripting language. It's really powerful, very popular. Um, for me, uh, what I'm about to say uh, is not what I say is the gospel. I'm just basing it on my experiences. But uh, there's no right and wrong for yourself. Uh, but some people do come to me for my advice, for my opinion. This is my opinion of R. R is okay to work with. I played with it for about six months. Um, there's some powerful stuff that you can do with it that you can't do with other languages like MATLAB. But the good thing is it's free. Um, it's a pretty good ecosystem uh, that's available. It's obviously popular, a lot of documentation, good community. Um, and, and the one powerful thing that really made me move to it was the R Studio, that, that as a platform to, uh, you know, what we call an integrated development environment, enabling me to do all sorts of powerful things visually um, and, and just being able to install packages quite easily. My dilemma with uh, RStudio and R as a whole, um, I could be wrong on this as of today, July 30th, 2013. There, there, there may be some uh, discrepancies here because I might be out of date, but when I did play with R uh, about up to the end of 2012, there was no visual debugger that was part of RStudio, and that's a huge deal for me. That's a deal breaker, actually, because when I'm learning anything new, any kind of new script or any kind of program, whatever, I need my visual debugger. That's how I like to work it when I try to reverse engineer things. Um, and R Studio did not have that. I've been told that the R from R Revolutionary Analytics or whatever, the Enterprise Edition, has a visual debugger in it. Great. Well, how much does it cost? And uh, you know, I've never play, paid for an IDE whatsoever, uh, including R Studio. Another big drawback with R is that the packages are not coming from a vendor, meaning um, can I have confidence that if I'm going to build a trading model off of that that person who developed the R package, are they of whatever, um, are, do, are they capable of knowing and understanding fully the algorithm or the package that they're putting together? Um, so it's not like where you can sit there and say it's coming from MATLAB or MathWorks and with confidence in that you know that that package or that toolbox is going to be 100% uh, and, and you can use it in with confidence. It's one of the reasons why I think a lot of corporations don't use tools like R because um, they don't have a confidence in what is uh, what they're about to use. So the R package is, is, can be questionable. Uh, also, uh, the R packages themselves might not play nice with each other. Um, I'll get to that in a minute with MATLAB. So those are like three big drawbacks with R. Um, and there's probably some other minor stuff, but I can get around. Uh, so with MATLAB, uh, which comes from MathWorks, the vendor, obviously the big drawback, it's expensive, it's um, you know really meant for institutional type of uh, um, institutional type of uh, players out there. So MATLAB brings a lot of good things to uh, to uh, as a prototyping environment. Um, even uh, some of the big uh, uh, toolboxes, which are the same as our packages, uh, they all play nice together, as I mentioned. It's coming from the same vendor. You're gonna be paying some big money for those package uh, for those toolboxes, so you know with confidence. That they have to be pretty good. Um, it's very rare I've I've walked away with a, a disappointing experience with with MATLAB. Uh, guys like uh, Ernie Chan uses it. I've got some other uh, friends that use it, and I'm more convinced that's my develop or prototyping tool to build a trading strategies and models and all that with. 
So that brings me to Python. Now I've really never worked with Python, but I've heard the same disadvantages with R. Uh, can't vectorize really well. Packages don't play nice with each other. Uh, and as far as I know, uh, there might not be a, a, a visual debugger, but from my understanding, the NetBeans supports Python, so if you can use NetBeans as, as your IDE, or again, your integrated development environment, hey, that's a pretty nice IDE to play with, especially for Python. So that may resolve that problem. Um, now remember, it's, uh, Python is a scripting language, uh, so that can be uh, a drawback if you're planning to build a trading platform with it. Now I can't talk about metrics because I've never played with it. I don't know. But, you know, the, all these, all these uh, uh, languages or environments are across platforms. So you can write any uh, script in any of these languages and it, it's cross-platform compatible, meaning from Windows to Linux to Mac, no problem. Okay, that brings us now to our platform. Now your trading platform typically will in include uh, market data uh, in real time, uh, in my case, let's say IQ feed, and also execution. Now there's also going to be some, probably some portfolio management, risk assessment, and that sort of thing. So uh, for the platform, uh, you know, when I was playing with these two languages for the last week, uh, I was getting so desperate, I was wanting to possibly execute all my trades through MATLAB. It can be done, but not wise. And, and you gotta remember when you do that, that's single threaded. So there's a big a, a challenge there because again, it's 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 uh, it's uh, it's single threaded. And same same with R, same with the Python. I would imagine uh, maybe Python's a lot more advanced, but this is the a big drawback with MATLAB. Okay, now let's talk about these two languages now. In terms of languages for a trading platform, I break these two up purposely. Now let's first talk about C++. The fastest language on the planet without a doubt is assembly. That's the closest you'll ever get to a microprocessor. The next language is C or C++. Now C is fine, I like it. Uh, planet code generated from MATLAB Simulink, uh, all my models front into C. Okay, so that's gonna be a straight up algorithm. There's gonna be no front end to it, nothing. Just a straight up, straight up C static library or DLL. Okay? Now, when you're working with C, it's a complicated language. A lot of platforms are written in C. That's fine. Uh, it's great with the intention of being able to develop a platform or any application in C and have a cross or a cross again cross platform independent. That's the whole purpose of C++. They have specific APIs um, that are supposed to be cross-platform independent. Okay, and that's a good advantage. Now, along comes Microsoft, and they develop Visual C++. Now, uh, I posted yesterday a posting about my opinion of Visual C++ and where it's at now in 2013. I can safely say I'd rather bang my head against a brick wall than work with Visual C++. And why do I say that? This is what I've been spending for the last week. Um, the C++ is fairly straightforward. Uh, you can still use some of the classic Cunningham and Ritchie uh, routines from C. Uh, obviously, you have to do you do have to worry about your own memory management. That's not a big big deal. It's multi-threaded, pretty advanced stuff. Once you want to start moving into Visual C++, manipulating strings, manipulating file input output, uh, just generally trying to do very basic things is like pure hell. So if you're trying to use some of the legacy uh, C functions, which I'm very used to, they work for me, that's what I'm used to many years ago, and it's supposed to be still compatible. Microsoft comes along and just bastardizes it so bad where you have to worry about a 32-bit, 64-bit, the string manipulations of mess. And now, lately, in the last, since I think, believe, uh, from as of .NET 4.0, they decided that we want to implement, uh, or you could take a Visual C++ program 
and implement it with .NET. Now that adds on to another set of confusing mumbo jumbo stuff. So in essence, I'll never, I, if I would never want to work with this language ever again. It's just, it's horrid. It's horrible, 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 horrible. Okay, the next one that's not so bad, but it's still, uh, is Java. Nice thing about Java, it's cross-platform independent, good. But the problem with Java, as of version seven, when Oracle came along to take it over, it's a, it, it's a botch. They've done a horrible job at maintaining Java. Uh, security breaches is a big one. I mean, it's so bad with security that they reach headlines in national news and BBC. That's how bad it is. And I mean, even Apple has taken off the Oracle JDK and JVMs off their uh, sites because of the security breach. It was that bad. And you, I'm sure Oracle's trying to update and patch it and it's just the hackers are now using Java as a way to to breach uh, systems is through Java so it's, it's it's not a good language to work with so she has a Java 7 the other dilemma I have with Java is if you want to do something fairly straightforward um, there's a hundred different ways to do it different APIs different frameworks and it's a pain in the ass to have them play nice with each other no different than if you move into R it's just it's 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 horrendous working with it. The other thing is when going back to the uh, languages or sorry the IDEs the integrated development environments. There's Eclipse and NetBeans. Eclipse is bad. It's just it's it's evolved into this like mess. And then you have NetBeans, which is good, but it's a step above. But it's still a pain in the friggin' ass to set up a Java project. I it just I just again I would rather bang my head against a brick wall than work with Java now, okay? Um, unless I was so forced to, I had no other choice. Um, but as I said, if you do want cross-platform, Java is a good option, but again, you're gonna run into other difficulties. No different than C++. So, fortunately, uh, Microsoft with .NET has a decent language. It's easy to set up, you get your answers uh, fast, when you go online, Microsoft's done a pretty decent job on the documentation. So if you're fairly new, C Sharp's a good language to go with for a platform. Now, is it faster than C++? Hell no. But let's put it this way. If you're starting out and you're wanting, like me, to get a, something up and running as fast as possible, this is a good language, C++, uh, C Sharp. Um, yes, it is Windows. Yes, it is from Microsoft. But when Microsoft develops something really good, it's really good. And this is one of them. So, I like my C Sharp. Uh, I have another piece of code I'll be showing and I'll be putting up uh, on my website for downloading. Uh, I had, it was originally done in C. I tried to convert it into Visual C++ and I spent a week on it. I just botching this, that, and the next thing. So I banned it after a week. Within half a day, taking the same C uh, program, I was able to easily convert it into C Sharp. That's, that's how good it is, and I'm by no means a C-sharp expert. Okay, so that is a good, good advantage from my perspective, for platform. All my components talk to C-sharp, which is great for IQ feed, for interactive brokers and some other stuff. Lots of C-sharp out there. Now, yes, it's only good for Windows, so there's going to be some Linux guy going, ah, oh, that's no good. Um, well... I've, I've mentioned this many times. Linux has turned into a mess. There's so many inter, in, uh, interpreted, uh, sorry, interpreted versions of it and variants of it, of Ubuntu to CentOS to Red Hat to, it, it's just, it's, it's, it's a mess. And uh, I don't like it. And to get something done, you go on an Easter egg hunt to find it. If you want to build an open source project, you have to compile and build other dependencies, which becomes a nightmare and it's really, really, really bogs you down. So that brings me back to Windows, like Windows 7, let's say, or the server edition of, of 2012 server. Windows has come along a long way, and I think Microsoft has really learned its lesson from the Vista days, uh, and they know that they've lost so much community and support for their products, uh, that they're not on their last legs, but they're really trying to make it better. And I think between this and C-sharp, um, it's easier to work with. 
and uh, I'm more productive in, in Windows, regardless if it's a server edition or not, and C Sharp. So these are my two preferred platforms in Windows using uh, .NET and C Sharp, which may, brings me back to what am I prototyping with? MATLAB, for all the reasons that I explained. I'm hoping this helps you. I'm not here to tick anybody off, but just to give you my opinion on what I'm planning to use and my experiences. And this is all inspired by, by this little bad little boy, Visual C++, what a mess. Talk to you later.